Religion is part of a complex of supernatural beliefs that are founded on lack of evidence and astrology, homeopathy, all sorts of things like that. And it could be said that some of these are harmless. I don't think it's harmless. There is something insidious about training children to believe things for which there's no evidence. And so an uncritical, kind of too open-minded, so open-minded your brains fall out attitude is a great pity because it means you miss such a lot. And merely to say that religion is harmless isn't good enough. Well, you said in a speech famously that I think a case can be made that faith is one of the world's great evils comparable to the smallpox virus, virus but harder to eradicate. I do think that, yes. Uh, because um, what I'm talking about there is faith, where faith means belief in something without evidence. Because if you believe something without evidence, then that justifies anything. You, you're no longer vulnerable to somebody coming back at you and saying, hang on a minute, let me argue the case. If you believe it without evidence, which is what faith is, then you don't argue the case. You say, no, I'm not arguing that case. This is my faith. It's mine. It's private. I don't, dis I don't dissent from it. I don't retreat from it. You're just going to have to accept it. Now, that is evil. And I think that's probably what religions are. Uh, I think they are a sort of computer virus which spreads because they contain within their own code the instructions for spreading. Um, <laughs> believe in me and pass it on to your children. I mean, that's a powerful <laughs> piece really of computer, computer virus code. Um, believe in me and go out and, and, and spread the word uh, in, uh, as, a, as a missionary. Um, uh, believe in me and you will have everlasting life. Considering that uh, atheism cannot possibly have any sense of absolute morality, would it not then be an irrational leap of faith, which atheists themselves so harshly condemn, for an atheist to decide between right and wrong? Absolute morality, the, the, the absolute morality that a religious person might profess would include what, stoning people for adultery? death for apostasy, uh, punishment for breaking the Sabbath. These are all things which are religiously based absolute moralities. I don't think I want an absolute morality. I think I want a morality that, that is thought out, reasoned, argued, discussed, and <laughs> based upon could almost say intelligent design. Um, <laughs> can we not design our society which has the sort of morality, the sort of society that, that we want to live in? If you actually look at the, the moralities that are accepted among modern people, among 21st century people, we don't believe in slavery anymore, we believe in equality of women, um, we believe in in being gentle, we believe in being kind to animals. These are all things which are entirely recent. They have very little basis in biblical or Quranic scripture. They are, th they are things that have developed over historical time through a consensus of reasoning, sober discussion, argument, legal theory, political and moral philosophy. These do not come from religion to the extent that you can find the good bits in religious scriptures, you have to cherry pick. You, you search your way through the Bible or the Quran and you find the occasional verse that is a, an acceptable profession of morality. And you say, look at that, that's religion. And you leave out all the horrible bits. <laughs> and you say, oh, we don't believe that anymore. We've grown out of that. Well, of course we've grown out of it. We've grown out of it because of secular moral philosophy and rational discussion. I think we have to make our morality by intelligent design. Are you um, taking back that term? Keep taking back that I term. Um, we, we certainly are not going to get any help from religion. God forbid we should get, from, get any, <laughs> any, 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 any moral help, either from scripture, which has a truly appalling moral lesson to teach, mm -hmm. or from just the sort of naive being good because you're scared of God being yeah. good because you, you're scared you'll go to hell. That's, again, a, a very immoral way to get your morality. Uh, for myself as a scientist, 
I'm accustomed to saying that the thing that I really object to about religion is that it teaches us to be satisfied with not understanding, teaches us to be satisfied with pseudo explanations which are really not explanations at all, things that sound good. <laughs> Things that sound like an explanation, but which really aren't, which appeal to the emotions, but don't actually explain anything. So I think that religion in that sense can be the enemy of science, the enemy of truth. But this evening I'm reflecting more that what may really be the enemy of truth and the enemy of science is willful obscurantism, whether it comes from religion or not. Is there something in particular that, that really you can't stand about God. About God. Uh, well, I don't think God, God exists, so, that, so obviously I, that, that wouldn't apply. Uh, there's something but, I can't stand about Christianity, which is just what I've been saying about this, this really obnoxious doctrine of original sin, which I think is, is, is actually hideous and uh, demeaning and um, is, um, it's, a, it's a vengeful doctrine. Um, it's the idea that, uh, that one can be um, absolved, that, that, uh, that a sin by somebody else has to be paid for by a different person, which is a, which is a horrible idea. Um, it's well, everything it about it is, okay. a, is an obnoxious doctrine. You talked about the evidence that your wife loves you. I think for most religious people, the evidence that there's a God is rather like that. When you say that your that your wife loves you and you do, you, you're getting evidence from looks in the vo looks in the eye and catches in the voice was the phrase that I actually used. Um, and the questioner said, that's the way religious people feel about God. Yes, they, they feel that about God, but there's no evidence that they're getting any cues at all. I mean, their, their God is an imaginary God inside themselves. Uh, they feel that they're getting little looks from the eyes of God and sounds from the voice of God. But why should we believe them since we can't see or hear any evidence to that effect? If God doesn't exist, then doing something good in his name, is gr it's great that something good gets done, but there's no evidence at all that believing in God makes you more likely to do good things. I can't see any noble logical connection between being religious and doing good things. To say, I don't understand X, therefore it must be magic, or therefore it must be supernatural, it must be a miracle, that's cowardly and defeatist, lazy. And I'd, I'd try to rather strongly um, make the case against that. You have to be open and constantly questioning and using the methods of science to try to find out what's really true.